I'm afraid of possibly getting exposed and that's why I'm not really putting myself out there. So in today's episode, we go through another installment of the coaching series. And today we're joined by Ben McAdam and he talks about how he's trying to overcome his imposter syndrome during a big launch for one of his programs. We cover certain subjects like understanding the difference between emotional worry and a valid logical concern and how to move beyond imposter syndrome to actually do the things that really serve you and especially how to not overcomplicate things because emotionally they're uncomfortable. So I want to thank Ben McAdam for being so open and so honest during this podcast. Enjoy the episode, guys. So let's do this. Let's get to it. So talk to me. What's going on? And we'll go from there. Okay. So uh, as you know, I launched a program recently. Um, we have been talking about something a bit more leveraged and using leverage and some things you said uh, over the end of the year, beginning of the year, finally clicked and I, I launched a program. So that was good. Um, and yeah. I got six people in it more than I thought. Also good. Um, Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then you sent me a message and said, Hey, Ben, I was looking for a post to share about your program and I can't find one. I bet, you know, there'd be lots of other people that would be happy to share it as well. And I just went, Oh no, I barely promoted this thing. I could have, I could have done so much better. Like why, what, why didn't I do this? All I did was post a few times on my Facebook, which not many people see. Thank you. Facebook algorithm, but, and then sent like two or three emails to my list. And that's like, that's it. I didn't ask friends to share it. I didn't ask for referrals, like nothing. I didn't put myself out there and didn't even occur to me to do it. So like, it's such an entrenched blind spot that I took the opportunity to ask for your help with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So first off, let's start with this. Why do you think you didn't promote it the way you could have? Um, I suspect um, imposter syndrome and worthiness has always been a thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. I was worried that like, if I put it out there, people would point and say it was stupid um, or people would point out, no, actually that's not a good thing. And it would like drive away the few people that might've signed up anyway. Um, mm -hmm. That I, you know, I didn't, maybe I'd, I didn't know whether it would work. I mean, the program is, literally all the projects that my one-on-one -on -one clients got great results from. I just like put them into a program, but still I didn't have enough confidence in the program um, and, and worried about external criticism as, as well. Okay. Can I pause you here? Yes. This is a really important thing to recognize. So it's, it's true that you didn't have a lot of confidence in the program. However, what's more true is that you didn't have confidence in yourself and that's why you weren't comfortable sharing the program. That'd be fair to say. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. Yes. Now, the reason I asked him this question and didn't just jump into how can we fix this was an important one. What I don't want to have happen is that he somehow repeats the same mistake in the future without recognizing. So we just fix this specific problem, but this issue is going to keep happening. So what we're trying to figure out here in this next part is I can help him understand why am I doing this? Why did I do something that doesn't actually serve me? Because if we can figure that out, then we can have that effect last over and over and over in various different occasions. So <laughs> here's the deal. Remember how we talked about we have to know our biases, like if you're over-optimistic, over-pessimistic, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. If you're saying that you have a history of imposter syndrome, even when it was proven to not be valid, correct? Like when mm -hmm. you've seen this. Yep. Yeah. So that's something you got to recognize that you naturally feel like an imposter, even though it's proven that you're not, and you've gone through this a lot in the coaching. Yeah. You saying, okay, I feel like you're not comfortable with this. Then you do it. And everyone's like, no, that was really, really good. Mm -hmm. You're not an imposter here. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing you got to recognize, man. You got to understand that's a bias of yours, that you're, you're always going to feel uncomfortable about sharing things and getting exposed. That's your big thing. Your fear of getting exposed. Yeah. And that's going to happen regardless if it's valid or not. Mm. Okay. So I have to overcorrect for it. Be before overcorrecting of it, first off, just being aware of it. So example, when you're launching, what would have been really powerful is when you launched a program, you would have stopped and said, okay, I'm about to launch something in public. So I know I'm naturally going to have a fear here of getting exposed. Is this valid or not? First off, because from what you're saying is you weren't even aware that it was happening. It was just a blind spot. Mm. Yep. So that's how you make it not a blind spot anymore. That's a okay. question you got to recognize. Okay. 
I know that I'm about to launch something and I know I have this fear being exposed because I think I'm going to have imposter syndrome and so on and so on. So first off, is this valid here or not? Mm. If it's not valid, what would somebody else who doesn't have this fear do in this kind of situation? Right. Yeah. And then you would have said, I probably would have made a refer page. I probably would have asked his friends to share on Facebook and so on and so on. Yep. Yep. Okay. So the, a, a bit like the person X exercise that we've worked together and you've talked on the podcast about previously. Exactly. But with you, the powerful thing now is knowing when to apply it. So for example, my, and my, my example I give is that I'm extremely poor visually, like aesthetics of websites, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, now yeah. I stop whenever I'm about, to, yeah, about I'm stop whenever I'm about to look at something. Wait, wait, wait. I know I have issues here. I don't have a clear eye for this. Just mm-hmm. that awareness stops me from just approving things that shouldn't be approved. And the same thing with you, you can say, okay, oh, wait, I'm about to do something in public here. I know I don't have a good eye to judge whether what I'm about to do is good or not good because I always just feel uncomfortable about it. Yep. I like that. I don't have a good eye to judge because I'm uncomfortable and I have that fear. Yep. That's clicking. Yeah, because think about it this way. Objectively, from what you're saying, Ben, over the last, let's say, two years, he's not shown clear judgment as far as if Ben should put himself out there or not. If he's, mm. he has a valid, if he knows what he's talking about or not, he's always felt like less than. Mm. Yep. Hmm. So I have to think before I start doing the thing and, you know, I get taken over by the fear and don't even think to share with my friends. I have to step back and say, wait, hang on a minute. I'm about to do something in public. And I know that my judgment on this whole area is not such a good idea. So what would someone else do in this situation? I should do that. So let's zoom out for a second, because Ben said something very important here. Now, what happens on a high level is that sometimes people say, I don't feel confident or don't feel comfortable with this specific thing. But in reality, they don't feel confident in themselves. Now, the problem happens when they just think it's this thing they're not confident in. So they keep trying to tweak it and add things to it and change all these things that won't actually make a difference to how they feel about themselves and therefore how they feel about this specific thing. And that's why it's really important to identify that truth. Because if you're just going to say, I am confident in myself, but I'm just not confident in this thing, then yes, maybe this thing has a specific problem you need to fix. But if you're trying to fix this thing because you're not confident in yourself, you're just going to go in this endless loop where you keep trying to iterate, iterate, but for no actual reason, and it's not actually going to make you more confident. You're just going to stay stuck there. So this is a very common thing that happens to a lot of entrepreneurs when they don't launch the thing or hire the person or have the conversation, whatever it may be. They tell themselves, I'm not confident in this specific thing, when in reality, you're just not owning the fact you're not confident in themselves, and this is just going to feel uncomfortable. And now let's get back to Ben. Yeah. Just having that ability to pause and I'll just blindside you. Okay. I'm doing something public. Okay. It's just, I don't want to share it because I'm going to get exposed, but say, okay, wait, I'm about to do something here that I'm probably not going to do. Cor- I'm not going to assess the situation correctly. Mm-hmm. Historically, I've proven that I don't view things in the right light here. So just from that, you can stop and ask logically, okay, is this a valid concern of mine or an emotional worry? Yeah. I know I have an emotion to worry about this, but these are also a valid logical concern. Like you said, like, these are things that the clients have gotten results from. Mm. This yeah. works. It's not like you're just putting something out there that you're thinking about. I've learned these theories and let's try to piece it together. <laughs> think this has actually yeah. worked. Yeah. And the reality is if you recognize that it's only like you falsified the, the part of it, we say it's not a valid concern. It's mm-hmm. only an emotional worry then you've got to ask, okay, what should somebody else do? Because I still feel uncomfortable about this. So what would someone else mm-hmm. want to succeed with this? Do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. That's a good, that's a good framework for thinking before I do anything in public, which is, is good timing because apart from promoting this program, I also want to like do more podcasts, do more presentations and workshops uh, to grow my audience. And again, that's going to be something in public and having this framework to go through before will be really helpful. Yeah. So let's 
let's do a practice run of this just for promoting the program right now. Okay. So first off, the emotional worry we've talked a lot about, the imposter syndrome, the fear of getting exposed. That's an emotional worry you have there. Do you feel that the getting exposed in the program, not you not being good enough, but the program not being good enough, let's just separate those two for now. Is that a valid concern? The program isn't good enough. There is a small chance because I'm delivering it slightly differently. Before it was like one-on-one, -on -one, Ben talking with you the whole way through. Whereas now I've got like some templates and intro videos for people to do, which I would use when I was doing it one-on-one. -on -one. They just don't have me sitting there live with them. So like there's a small chance that the delivery vehicle might not be as effective, but like I'm telling them exactly the same things to do. Yeah. So how can we fix that? Can you add office hours? Something that would make you feel this, okay, this is the right thing. I do have office hours and I have like this thing where I'm following up with people if they haven't made any progress or reached out or completed worksheets or anything. So actually I've already covered that small chance that it might not work now that I think about it. <laughs> do you offer any kind of guarantee on it? Uh, as a 30 day, love it or leave it. If it's not working, then we part as friends. They're not committed for the full 12 months. And if okay. it's, you know, don't tell anybody this between you and me and the not thousands of people listening, you know, if, if yeah. it's actually not working for someone, then I'm just going to refund their money. I, I don't want it to, yeah. to go good. Yeah. So here's the thing. Your main fear about this was that you're going to say that you were afraid that somebody who will see it will tell people this isn't worth it. And then people that were kind of the maybes, they won't convert because they're like, ah, somebody said this isn't actually that good. Hmm. That's what he said at the beginning, right? Yeah. Like logically, what do you think is more likely to happen? That those maybe somehow find out about you, or if you put it out there, more of them <laughs> will actually join. <laughs> yes, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, putting it out there will work better for converting the maybes than worrying about what someone might say. So Ben being able to ask himself and be armed with this kind of question to ask himself in the future is a really powerful thing because what it helps him do is avoid a future blind spot and stumbling over that same thing again. So if you can clarify around what subject that question needs to be for you, where have I displayed poor judgment, you can avoid tripping up in the future. So let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, and the reality is I think also beyond, I think it's really important just to accept that you're also going to have some negative feedback about this. Some people are going to say something negative. Someone's going to, there's always going to be haters and just accept that. Take that uh, emotional road bump you have to expect that we talked about today. It, it's mm -hmm. that. It's like you, if you go into it hoping that, oh, I hope nobody says anything bad, then yeah, you're going to keep yourself in a little bubble. Yeah. Because it's inevitable that someone's going to say something bad. Like people say bad things about my program, I'm sure. About me as a person, I'm sure. Okay. Yes, that's a good point. If, if only like 0.0001% of people complain, like unless you're tiny, there will be complainers. Um, exactly. Yeah. So if I want to do something big, if I want to help a lot of people, I'm going to have to accept that there will be some negative feedback despite my best efforts. Yeah. It's just, it's a part of it. Hmm. It, it. There's, there's just no way to avoid it. If, unless you're, again, unless you're just trying to stay in a, in a small little room where no one can see you, no one can hear about you. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, unless I stay visibly small. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Okay, so we've recognized that you're saying for the program, it's not a valid concern. It's just still an emotional thing. That's A, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now you also recognize the emotional thing. Like This is just a part of the game. Some people are going to say something negative about me. Yeah. Correct? Yep. You feel more comfortable with it? I do. Not completely comfortable. Like I understand like this yeah, is going to be a not supposed of courage. To be. <laughs> so I want to interject here for a second and explain why Ben is laughing a little bit. So here's the thing. A lot of times when we're about to do something that we feel scared of, there is a certain heaviness there. But what we did through this process, we just spelled like, is there anything you should actually be afraid of for this specific thing? And the moment he realized that there isn't, there was a little bit of levity created. And that was the last. It was like, ah, oh, this feels so much more comfortable. This is kind of silly. How is doing these kind of things? It's a really important thing to think that if you can't find yourself being able to just 
have a sense of levity while you're doing things and everything feels so heavy, it probably means that you're attaching more emotional weight onto the thing than there actually should be. So it's a really good sign. Tell yourself, if I feel this really sense of heaviness and pressure and I can't find anything funny, this all just feels too intense, it's probably that something that's playing up in the background is causing you to feel this is much more heavy than it actually needs to be. So with that, let's get back to the podcast. But, <laughs> but comfortable enough. I know like we work together and so I'm comfortable being like, there's a, I have a management, a manageable amount of discomfort I can, I can work through. Now. Yeah. And you recognize now that also that discomfort, it's not, you understand where that comes from, that it's not something you actually need to be concerned about. It's not this, okay, there's something here. You didn't look, you didn't see, you don't understand, but it's just like, okay, cause it's good. Somebody potentially is going to say something negative. That's a part of it. Mm -hmm. That's unpleasant. Yeah. So now what's the next action? What are the main things that if someone else was in your situation, you tell them, Hey, do these things in order to promote it. Let's write that down. Yep. So we have done a little bit of that last week in the arena, fantastic session on mission planning. And that's, that's in my plan for April, um, to draw up a list of people to reach out, to reach out to them, to do a presentation, to a podcast. Um, what's not on the plan suspiciously now that I think about it is telling my friends and asking if they can share it with their audiences. I mean, technically they'd be on the list, but it, like I could just ask, I can just send them a message. What about to old clients as well who actually work with you? Yeah. Old clients. I could ask current clients. Okay. Anyone's thinking about working with me. I've got this great program. Yep. So what's going on here is that you're naturally gravitating to relationships that aren't really strong. So you're like, Oh, there's not a big risk here. If this is a bit too much or if they don't like it or whatever. Oh, that's interesting. And you're more comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. That's a very Instead of saying, let me reach out to my friends and to my list of clients, former and current. Mm -hmm. Like those are the people that are actually going to give you the highest like, likelihood of getting more people and recommending it, especially your clients. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Man, there's layers to this stuff. <laughs> Always layers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm glad you asked this. That's the thing, question. man. If you reach out to your out to your me. horde of like your your stable of clients, that's the the lowest hanging fruit. That's the most emotionally difficult. Technically, mm. it's the easiest thing to do. It's going to give you the biggest return. It's just the most emotionally difficult. Yeah. So I want to jump in here and explain something really, really important about discomfort. There's basically two kinds of discomfort. There's one discomfort that actually should say this is a warning sign. I should stop. And another kind of discomfort that I just need to accept is going to be there. So what we did with Ben right here is we figured out, is this actually a valid discomfort? You say, you know what? Something here actually is wrong. My brain is signaling that something is wrong here and I should stop. Therefore, I feel uncomfortable. And let me work back from this. And that part we figured out isn't true. We said it's not a valid logical concern. So therefore, this discomfort needs to be dispelled. Now, we're asking, do you still feel a bit uncomfortable? He says, yes. And we say, that's correct. because That's reality. You're putting yourself out there. And just accepting that base level discomfort is still going to be there. But... It doesn't mean that anything's wrong. It's really powerful because now when he bumps into that discomfort, he's not going to start second guessing himself. He can give himself the ability to say, you know what? This isn't a valid logical concern. I just feel a little bit uncomfortable because I'm putting myself out there. But that's a discomfort that I can handle, that I know it's okay. And it's just me feeling a feeling. So I don't have to worry and I can keep going. Let's get back to the podcast. Oh, sorry if you can hear typing on the podcast microphone. I have to write down all the gold nuggets. Um, good. Hmm. Okay. So I need to reach out to past clients, current clients, friends, uh, most likely to be successful. Just understand that when I do this, I'm going to feel uncomfortable about it. Um, yeah. Hmm. I think that's the biggest part. The more you can just embrace, okay, this is going to feel uncomfortable, but that's not a sign that anything is wrong or I need to be deterred by this. That's when you can do the simple things, that lowest hanging fruit that's just emotionally uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like most people avoid that stuff. That's why they create all this complexity. Yeah. Yeah. So the one other practical concern that's going to stop me um, is that it's the school holidays for the next two weeks. The kids are home and at least the second week, I want to not be working a huge amount so that I can spend time with them and help 
not leave all four of them with my wife. Can I tell us you hear bad? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> how much work is it actually? Like, how long? How many hours is it going to take for you to message to drop a voice note, for example? Oh, to no, all see, of your past clients. It's it's going to be really quick, but then of course there's going to be this avalanche of of things that I'm you know exactly preempting and <laughs> worrying about. So like. <laughs> Don't and don't overcomplicate it. So just sending them a simple voice note or a simple message, whatever they prefer, whatever like they usually like to communicate through. Like, hey, I'm doing this thing. If you know anyone, if you want more details, please let me know. And I remember you had this one kind of one pager Google Doc that you send people. Yep. Just do that. Yep. Just do that. Don't overcomplicate it. This is again mm -hmm. like the time efficient. Like if you were a machine, it would be the most easy, simple thing to do. Just like your your emotions are complicating it, but just sending those people again, not even your friends, just to clients, and past and and present. That's it. That's gonna be the biggest ROI. This is actually one of my favorite questions to both ask myself and clients when I'm working with them. What is the simplest thing that you can do that would also be the most emotionally uncomfortable? It's amazing how much that uncovers. So when you simply ask yourself, what is the simplest thing that I can do that would both be the most emotionally uncomfortable? Because usually we avoid doing the simple things because they're emotionally uncomfortable. This is the classic example of somebody building up a crazy autoresponder or an opt-in instead of just asking his friends, hey, would you like to be a part of my business? And this is kind of the same thing. So for you, what a great question you can ask yourself right now is, what am I avoiding in the business? And what would be the simplest way to do it? But it would be the most emotionally uncomfortable. It might jog up something interesting. Let's get back to the pod. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's helpful. Yeah, I can do that. Um, e even if like, you know, it is successful and I get tons of sales calls, then that's going to be like little 15 minute initial calls that don't take up much time. And a lot of them might happen before the kids are really ready to get started for the day anyway. So it's not really a problem when I think it's true that the school holidays are yeah. on soon. Yeah. Hmm. So what just happened here is Ben, without recognizing, wanting to protect himself. So this is a very common thing that pretty much all of us do, is that even after we dispel logically that this is an okay thing to do, somehow we try to figure out, how can I still not do it because it doesn't feel fully safe? So we come up with all these reasons. I don't want to call them excuses because they're not. They're not trying to find excuses, but we're just trying to find a way to protect ourselves from something we're afraid of, putting ourselves out there, whatever it may be. So a really important part is to not just say, okay, this is valid. It feels uncomfortable. Let's go. But to also anticipate what else could I bullshit myself about to avoid doing it? Because the more we can flush those things out preemptively and falsify them, for example, saying this is okay, the school holidays are going to ruin this then we don't stop ourselves from doing what we know we should be doing. So it's really important to first figure out if it's valid or not, then recognize it's going to be uncomfortable, but also to preemptively figure out what are we going to tell ourselves to avoid doing it? And then preemptively also falsify that as well. Let's go back to the podcast. Again, and, but also recognize that that's also going to happen. That's natural. It's like, again, your brain's going to look for reasons. Why should we not do this? Let's yeah. find a reason for it. <laughs> Please, so it's something to be reason. aware of that as soon as you have, yeah. So as soon as you have that objection, recognize this is probably coming again from that place of me somehow being concerned about being exposed. I'm trying to protect myself and always stress that it is a valid concern or is this an emotional worry? Valid yeah. concern. It's not because it's going to take you three minutes a person to send them a message. Mm -hmm. And then how you said a 15 minute sales call. Yeah. Yeah. I always enjoy our calls. It's, it's, at some point, I just, <laughs> like, I get this uh, feeling when you're like, you know, you're getting in there and then uh, there's the, like the lightness happens at some point. I imagine this is how people feel like when they get a, a sports massage. Yeah. It really is just simple. Once my emotions are out of the way. It's simple. It's just not easy. That's the thing. Mm. But once you recognize that and you don't allow yourself to get confused when you think it's not easy, so there's something wrong. That's when you can just do it. Mm. Yep. That makes sense. So to move this into an actionable level, what, by when can you actually do this to reach out just to the clients? Uh, well, I blocked out a whole hour and a half for this podcast just in case. So I have the house to myself, so I could do it right after this. Beautiful. Um, 
yeah, just is that the main off. thing you want to talk about today? Yeah, I th- I think that's probably the main one. Um, the big one that's holding me back. If I can, you know, get more people into the program, then wonderful things happen from there. Or if I can stop getting in my own way about getting in front of other people's audiences and therefore growing my audience. And then like that, that's the lead domino that leads to a lot of success for me. Yeah. But again, I think you're also, you're skipping ahead. The whole going to other people's audiences, that's a way for you to solve the the actual problem right now that we're facing is you're saying, I want more people in the program. There's not enough people in the program right now. Yeah. The simplest solution is to talk to your former and like former and present clients. That's the simplest solution to that. The more technically complex, but emotionally easier because you don't really know these people. You don't have already a relationship with them is to reach out to other people, go on their list and so on and so on. And that is absolutely a stage you need to be doing. But first you got to do the lowest hanging fruit, which Mm. is right here. Yeah. And I think it'll also give you some momentum to do that, to get a couple of yeses from there and then go to the next phase. Mm. Yep. Yes, you're right. Yeah, so I'll send messages to clients right after we're done. It's like 40 people I could send messages to. Oh, no. That's awesome. Of course you're writing that down. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I do. <laughs> yep. That's the thing, man. You mess with these 40 people. I can't see the program not being in a different place. And again, it might not happen instantaneously, but you just give them that as an option. And also there might be some people who say, okay, I didn't know that we worked with two, two years ago. We worked together. Actually, I want to try this now. How can yeah. I join? You never know. Yeah. 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 That sounds good. Now in my head, I'm well, so let me ask you this beyond the, Sorry. the pragmatic thing of right now, reaching out to 40 people. What's your main takeaway on a principle level from this? The principle level is that Ben has demonstrated that his judgment is not sound when it comes to doing stuff in public um, on what actions he should take. Uh, He tends to err on the side of doing less and getting taken over by imposter syndrome. Um, and And so I need to ask is this for you valid or not? And what would someone else do? Or what would I advise someone else to do? And, and also to expect and accept that there will be negative feedback uh, along this path. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Thank you. This was helpful. Yeah. Any other questions before we wrap up? Man, there are so many things I could always be asking you. I'm like a bottomless pit of questions, but I think that would be a distraction from what I need to do now. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Cool, man. <laughs> so um, I'll let you. I'll let you get to it, honestly, Thank you. and get to work, man. Is that good? Awesome. Thank you, Edmar. Now, the way we wrap this up is really powerful because instead of just saying, okay, Ben, you have a solution to this specific problem, we made sure that he didn't show the principle here. So he just, after these 25 minutes of the talk, he was a wiser individual and he could better manage himself to see success in the future, not just with this specific thing. And it's a really powerful thing to do. When you're figuring out something, you have a situation that was kind of stuck and then you figure it out, ask yourself, what's the principle behind this? Because the more principles, the more understanding of yourself you can arm yourself with, the better you'll deal with things in the future as well. So if yourself, you're feeling sometimes like you overcomplicate things, perhaps you're getting stuck, you're zigzagging instead of just going to a straight line, a really powerful question that I would ask you to consider is what's the simplest technical thing that I could do that would be the most emotionally uncomfortable? Asking yourself that specific question that uncover various things could be really interesting and you can work through. Until next time, guys, enjoy the podcast. Thank you for listening to the Emotional Fortitude Podcast. Please tell a friend if you enjoyed it and found value in it. Three last things before you go, though. If you feel like someone else with your exact skill set and abilities could be accomplishing more than you currently are, that's a mindset and emotional access issue. And here are three ways I'd love to help you conquer any internal limitations, go big, and win. One, three quick ideas Tuesday newsletter. 
It's a weekly email with three quick ideas around one aspect of elite performance and how to approach it differently to get better and faster results. People say it's the most thought-provoking and impactful two minutes they spend in their inbox each week. It's easy to sign up to and easy to cancel, and you can sign up at edamumryan.com slash three ideas. Two is the Emotional Fortitude Micro Course. It will help you build the emotional fortitude and confidently tackle any goal. It's the complete, nothing held back, emotional fortitude system in five simple parts. It's all under five minutes each module. See it, use it, and win. And it's completely free at edamarmorani.com slash course. And number three, lastly, if you want to dive in and aggressively level up, the Arena Mindset Accelerator might be for you. It's a six-week intense sprint for entrepreneurs who are up for a dramatic transformation. It's an interactive live program where you'll be working with me in a very hands-on way to get clarity on what you want, build an effective mindset to optimize for your goals, and establish elite emotional fortitude that would allow you to overcome any fear or doubt that could get in your way. You can learn more at itamarmorani.com slash accelerator. You can find all of these links in the show notes below or go to itamarmorani.com and have a look around. Until next time, who dares wins.